Hey, YouTubers. So, uh, now we're going to continue on Dork Diaries. I know it's been a while since we do it, so we're on part four now. So, I'm going to put you on it so all of you can listen. So, here's part four of Dork Diaries. This diary belongs to Nikki J. Maxwell, private and confidential. If found, please return to me for reward. No snooping allowed. Rachel Renee Russell presents the Dork Diaries podcast. Brought to you by Simon & Schuster Audio. Episode 4, Wednesday, September 11th. Today, everyone in the cafeteria was super excited because Mackenzie was handing out invitations to her big birthday bash. Guys were high-fiving one another, and girls, like Lisa Wang and Sarah Cohen, were crying and hugging one another like they had just scored tickets to a sold-out concert of their favorite boy band. I got an invite! I got an invite! OMG, I'm so excited. It was beyond disgusting. Ew! For the rest of the day, everyone Mackenzie invited to her party sucked up to her like human vacuum cleaners. <gasps> Except for Brandon Roberts. Here, Brandon. When she gave him an invitation, she tried to flirt with him by twirling her hair around her finger and smiling really big. She even accidentally dropped her purse on purpose so he would pick it up for her. But Brandon just glanced at Mackenzie's invitation, shoved it into his backpack, and walked right past her. And boy, did she get upset when he blew her off like that. Then, a bunch of jocks trampled all over her expensive new designer purse before she could pick it up off the floor. Personally, I kind of liked the dirty footprints better than that boring floral pattern. Anyway, Brandon is so cool. From what I can tell, he seems to be kind of the quiet rebel type. He's a reporter and photographer for the school newspaper and has won a few awards for his photojournalism. Once, he actually sat at my lunch table, but I don't think he noticed me staring at him. Probably because his shaggy, wavy hair is forever falling into his eyes. And today in biology, he asked, Could I take a picture for the school newspaper of you dissecting your frog? I almost died. I was shaking so badly, I could hardly hold the scalpel. But now... Every tiny detail of his perfect face is permanently etched in my mind. Is it possible that I am falling in love for the first time? I see you in my dreams, in your favorite white button-down shirt, sitting across from me in the cafeteria. I've never seen anyone eat fries so beautifully. I see you in biology class, taking pictures for the school newspaper when you whisper to the depths of my soul. Hold the frog at an angle. For it is only you who can make a photo of a dissected frog seem so vibrant, so alive, yet dead. It hurts to feel this way, to know that you'll never know me. To want to run my fingers through your dark wavy hair as I realize that the putrid smell of formaldehyde and the dull gaze of a lifeless frog will forever remind me of us. I'm totally crushing on Brandon. Thursday, September 12th. During my P.E. class, even the scared-of-balls girls were gossiping about Mackenzie's party. But I'm pretty sure they didn't get invited either. They're the really prissy girls who hang in small groups and scream hysterically whenever a ball comes near them. It could be a, 
basketball, football, baseball, soccer ball, tennis ball, volleyball, beach ball, ping pong ball, moth ball, or even a meatball. They're not very picky. Yep, you can always count on these scared of balls girls to mess things up and lose the game for you. Stop! <laughs> OMG! No! It's really cruddy to have girls like Chloe and Zoe on your team. Especially if you absolutely hate taking showers after P.E. class. Just the thought of showering at school makes me nauseous. It will totally be their fault if I catch some kind of incurable disease from the slimy mold and mildew growing in those nasty showers. Before my shower, I am slightly sweaty, but clean and fresh. After my shower, I am covered in stink, mildew, and slime. Ew! I was really surprised when Chloe and Zoe came up to me after P.E. class and started talking. Of course, I pretended like I was not super angry at them for running away from the ball and making me filthy from taking that nasty shower. Hi, Nikki. Mrs. Peach told us that you are assigned to work with us in the library. Yay! We're super excited about it. Like, what is so exciting about shelving library books? But I just played along and pretended to be as thrilled about it as they were. OMG! OMG! I can't believe we're going to be shelving books together! How cool is that? We ended up eating lunch together at table nine, and it was really nice not having to eat alone for once. Chloe's full name is Chloe Cristina Garcia, and she is Latina. Her family owns a software company. It was amazing, because she has read, like, all of the latest novels. She said, I live vicariously through the characters' joys and heartbreaks, and learn a lot of stuff about life, love, boys, and kissing, which I plan to use when I go to high school next year. I own 983 books and have read most of them twice. I was like, wow. Zoe's full name is Zoisha Ebony Franklin, and she is African American. Her mom is an attorney, and her dad is a record company executive. I've met practically all of the biggest pop stars. They're just normal people. I really like reading self-help and inspirational books because they help me appreciate the simple joys of living. She explained, Now, I have a mom and a stepmother. Having just one overbearing mother figure in your life can sometimes be challenging and mentally exhausting. But can you imagine having two OM? G. Then Zoe said, Nikki, how can you stand having a locker next to Mackenzie's? She's so shallow. She rubs lipstick on her forehead to make up her mind. And being super conceited can sometimes develop into a narcissistic personality disorder. I could not believe Zoe actually said that. I thought everyone at this school worshipped Mackenzie. We laughed so hard that chewed up carrot bits shot right out of my nose. All three of us were like, ew, gross. Then Chloe said, hey, carrot flavored boogers. Let's give them to Mackenzie so she can sprinkle them over her tofu salad as a low carb topping. We laughed so hard at Chloe's joke that the kids sitting at tables six and eight started staring at us. I even saw Mackenzie glance our way, but then she looked away really fast so we wouldn't make the huge mistake of thinking she actually acknowledged our existence. I could tell she was wondering what was going on. Anyway, I had a blast with Chloe and Zoe at lunch today, so I've forgiven them for that shower fiasco in P.E. class. I can't wait to hang out with them every day in the library. Who would have thunk I'd actually look forward to being an LSA and shelving books? I could totally be BFFs with Chloe and Zoe because all three of us are a little crazy.
Friday, September 13th. I was pretty sick and tired of hearing about Mackenzie and her stupid little party. But since she is in my geometry class and I sit right behind her, I knew I was just going to have to deal with it. I was trying my best to ignore her when she turned around, smiled at me, and did the strangest thing. Psst. Hey, Nikki. She handed me a bright pink invitation tied with a big white satin bow. I gasped and almost fell out of my chair. My brain was like, OMG, OMG, OMG. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen, other than maybe that new cell phone I want. Who would have thought that I would get an invitation to the party of the year? Then it dawned on me that this might be some kind of really cruel joke. So I looked around the room for a hidden camera or something. That's when I realized that most of the other girls in my class were staring at me with envy and disbelief. It was really weird because suddenly I noticed I had tiny lint balls all over my favorite hoodie. And it made me feel self-conscious, so I tried to pick a few of them off. None of Mackenzie's friends would be caught dead in a not-from-the-mall hoodie with lint balls on it. So I made a mental note. Burn current wardrobe. Mackenzie was still smiling at me like I was her new BFF or something. Hey, hon, I was just wondering if you... But I was so excited. I jumped right in and interrupted her before she could even finish her sentence. Mackenzie, I would love to. Thanks for asking me, hun. Okay, so I actually called her hun, even though I always thought that word sounded super phony. And yes, I was happy and relieved that finally Mackenzie had stopped treating me like some kind of diseased, fashion-challenged, um, loser. But mostly, I was in shock. I could hardly believe I was actually going to Mackenzie's party. Soon, I was going to have friends and a social life. OMG! What if I ended up with a boyfriend? I would literally just pee my pants and die. I was starting to believe that my That's So Hot magazine was right. Maybe the key to happiness really was friends, fun, fashion, and flirting. Scooby! I felt like I was floating on air, surrounded by sunshine, rainbows, twinkling stars, and pink cotton candy clouds as I passionately clutched my invitation to Mackenzie's party over my heart. My hands were trembling as I untied the ribbon and tore open the envelope. Suddenly, Mackenzie narrowed her eyes at me and scowled like I was something smeared on the bottom of her shoe. You idiot! What are you doing? Um, opening m my invitation? I was already starting to have a really bad feeling about this whole party thing. Like I would invite you? She sneered, flipping her blonde tresses and batting her long lashes at me in disgust. Aren't you the new girl who hangs around my locker all the time, like some kind of creepy stalker? Well, yes. I mean, no. Actually, my locker is right next to yours. Uh, are you sure? She was looking me up and down like I was lying to her or something. I couldn't believe she was actually pretending like she didn't know me. I've only had a locker next to hers, like, forever. I'm very sure. Then Mackenzie took out her crazy kissalicious lip gloss and applied, like, three extra thick layers. After gazing at herself in her little compact mirror for an entire minute... She is so stuck on herself. She snapped it shut and glared at me. Before you so rudely interrupted me, I was simply asking if you would pass my invitation to Jessica. 
How was I supposed to know you were going to rip it open like some uncivilized gorilla? <laughs> then everyone in the class turned around and stared at me. I could not believe my ears. How dare that girl actually call me uncivilized? Oh, okay. My bad. I was trying to sound coolly nonchalant about the whole thing while blinking back tears. Um, who's Jessica? Suddenly, I felt a sharp tap on my shoulder. I turned around to face the girl sitting in the desk behind me. I'm Jessica. I can't believe you opened my invitation. I definitely remembered seeing her hanging out with Mackenzie next to my locker. She had long blonde hair and was wearing glittery pink lip gloss, a pink sweater, a pink mini skirt, and a headband trimmed with fake pink diamonds. If I had spotted her in Toys R Us, I swear, I would have probably mistaken her for a new fashion doll that said, Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm really, really ticked. I was desperately trying to tie the satin ribbon back on when Jessica snatched the invitation from my hand so violently I almost got a paper cut. I felt like a total idiot. And to make matters worse, I heard a few of the kids around me snickering. This was absolutely the most embarrassing moment of my pathetic little life. And I had no doubt that, in just a matter of minutes, everyone in the entire school was going to be texting gossip about me. I was relieved when our geometry teacher, Mrs. Sprague, finally started class. Okay, everyone, here's how to calculate volume. The volume of a cylinder equals the area of the base. She spent the entire hour at the board reviewing how to calculate the volume of a cylinder, sphere, and cone for our upcoming test on Monday. But I was too freaked out to concentrate on math formulas and was totally not listening. I just sat there staring at the back of Mackenzie's head, wishing I could disappear. I guess I must have been really upset because a tear rolled down my cheek and splattered my geometry notebook. But I wiped it up with the sleeve of my not-from-the-mall lint ball-covered hoodie before anyone saw it. Even though I was totally bummed about all the drama over the invitation, I really wasn't that mad at Mackenzie. I'm such a loser. If I was having a party, I wouldn't invite myself either. Saturday, September 14th. I've had the most horrible week ever. Why? Because Mackenzie has totally trashed my life. One, she totally ridiculed me with her cruel fashion commentary. Two, she ruined my chances in the avant-garde art competition. Three, she dissed me by not inviting me to her party. Four, she embarrassed me by calling me an uncivilized gorilla. Five, she publicly humiliated me by giving me an invitation and then uninviting me. Six, she tried to steal the one true love of my life, Brandon Roberts, by inviting him to her party, flirting with him, and twirling her hair around and around in a desperate attempt to hypnotize him into doing her evil bidding. <laughs> I planned to spend my entire weekend just sitting on my bed in my pajamas, staring at the wall, and sulking. Which, strangely enough, always seems to make me feel a lot better. But my plans were completely ruined. <laughs> Hey, Nikki! Around noon, my mom came bouncing into my room all cheerful and announced that for lunch, we were having a family cookout on the grill. She said, Honey, get dressed quick and come out into the backyard and join the fun! Well, obviously, I wasn't in the mood for fun, and I just wanted to be left alone. And I don't like hanging out in our backyard, because I have seen some fairly large spiders out there. I have a thing about spiders. They creep me out. 
Also, my doctor has diagnosed me as being highly allergic to pests that suck human blood, such as spiders, mosquitoes, ticks, leeches, and vampires. My life motto is, bloodsuckers cannot be trusted. Anyway, when I went outside, my dad was wearing the apron that we got him for Father's Day. It said, my dad is the world's greatest cook. But most of the letters have faded off in the wash, and it now says, My dad eats ook. He was grilling the meat while whistling old disco tunes. Then, out of the blue, he suddenly developed a major complication. Not with his whistling, but his grilling. I guess you could call it a bug problem. So when he told me to run into the house and get the can of bug spray, I had a really bad feeling about it. I was like, Dad, are you sure? And he was like, I don't plan on sharing my $20 steaks with these pesky flies. Well, that was a big mistake, because the bugs were not pesky flies. You'd think an experienced exterminator would recognize a fly when he saw one. Unfortunately for Dad, he was dealing with a nest of very angry wasps. Well, our cookout ended up being a total disaster. To make Dad feel better, we all complimented him on how handsome he looked in his snazzy apron. Even though he was a little dirty from knocking over the neighbor lady's garbage cans when he was running away from those wasps. Poor Dad. Aww. However... The good news is that I was able to go back up to my room and put in a few more hours of intense sulking. Woohoo! <laughs> soon for the next installment in the Dork Diaries Tales from a Not-So-Fabulous Life podcast. And don't forget, the entire Dork Diaries series is available right now, wherever books and audiobooks are sold. Read or listen to them today. This deck... Okay, guys. Um... That's um, part four of Dark Diaries, um, Tales from a Not-So-Fabulous Life. So I see you in part five.